discover the wonders of the night sky with a classic beginner telescope, the Celestron Astromaster, a great first telescope to enjoy with your family. Every Astromaster, from the compact 70mm refractor to the 130mm reflector, reveals dazzling views of craters on the moon, the rings of Saturn, the moons of Jupiter, the Orion Nebula, and many more of the most popular celestial objects. Choose the larger Newtonian reflectors for brighter, more detailed images. Even if you've never used a telescope before, you'll be navigating the sky in minutes with your Astromaster. The equatorial mount is a favorite of amateur astronomers because it makes it easy to track objects as they appear to move across the sky. Your Astromaster includes everything you need for a great night of stargazing. Two eyepieces, a permanently mounted red dot finder scope, and a sturdy, full-size steel tripod with accessory tray. When you're out under the stars, use Celestron's free Sky Portal mobile app for iOS and Android to locate objects in the night sky. As you observe, listen to Sky Portal's audio descriptions for the most popular objects. Happy stargazing! My name is Michelle and I work for Ryan Telescopes and Binoculars. Today we'll look at the Starblast 4.5 Astro Reflector, a tabletop telescope. This is what your Starblast 4.5 telescope looks like when it arrives at your door. This is what the Starblast 4.5 looks like inside its box. It's the telescope and the base which comes assembled, the instruction manual and the Starry Night DVD and the Starblast 4.5 Accessory Kit. These are the items that come included with your Starblast 4.5. The telescope and the base, which come assembled. The Orion Easy Finder 2. 17mm eyepiece. High power 6mm eyepiece. The Orion Starry Night DVD software. And the Starblast 4.5 Instruction Manual. We will now assemble the telescope so you and your family can go enjoy some fun under the stars. This is the Orion Easy Finder 2. Helps you aim your Starblast 4.5 up to the sky for viewing. We're now going to attach the Orion Easy Finder to the telescope. Unscrew thumb screws from the posts. Take your Orion Easy Finder 2, put it over the post here. You want to make sure the window is facing towards the open end of the telescope and simply screw on the thumb screws. You want to make sure that they're nice and tight just like that. Let's complete the assembly of the Orion Starblast 4.5 by inserting an eyepiece into the focuser. Remove the dust cap from the focuser. Loosen the thumb screws. Take your eyepiece chrome side down and slide it into the focuser and tighten the screws. Once your eyepiece is installed, rotate the focuser wheels to bring your view into focus. An optional Orion moon filter is useful and affordable eyepiece accessory. The moon is bright when viewed through a telescope and the surface can appear to be washed out. By attaching the Orion moon filter to your eyepiece, it will reduce the glare. To attach the moon filter, simply thread it into the chrome side of the eyepiece, and then slide the eyepiece into the focuser and tighten the screws. Now that your telescope is completely assembled, you and your family can simply pick it up and go explore the night sky. Thanks for watching and have fun. Stunning views, advanced performance, and solid construction you can count on for years to come. That's what you get with the Celestron CPC series of telescopes. A favorite among experienced amateur astronomers, the CPC combines Celestron's signature schmidt cassegrain optical tube in 8, 9 and a quarter, 
or 11 inches with a sturdy dual fork arm mount for precise locating and tracking of celestial objects. The telescope comes complete with a 9x50 finder scope, an eyepiece, and a heavy duty adjustable steel tripod. Celestron's revolutionary Skyline technology, plus an internal GPS, have you ready to observe in minutes. The computerized hand control contains a database of over 40,000 celestial objects and even generates a list of all the best objects currently visible. At the end of your night, your CPC's ergonomic design makes it easy to break down, transport, and store. If you're interested in astroimaging, the CPC is a great way to get started. Attach a Nex image or Skyrus Solar System Imager to capture the moon and planets, or add the optional HD Pro Wedge and your DSLR to capture deep sky objects like galaxies and nebulae. Take your stargazing experience to the next level with the CPC series. Hi, I'm Ken from Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I'm going to talk about the Orion uh, Observer 80ST, uh, what it is, some of the features about it, some basic use, and uh, get you started observing things in the night sky. So let's get started. Well, the first thing to know about this telescope is that it's an 80 millimeter refractor and a fairly short focal length. It's a 400 millimeter focal length f5, so you get a very low power and a very wide field natively out of this telescope. Now you can always enhance the magnification by putting different eyepieces in, but the, the best part of this telescope is it is such a wide field of view. So 80 millimeters at low power is great for looking at the Orion Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy, those really big deep sky objects. It also makes them very bright too, um, relatively speaking. So it's, it's fairly easy to see those things if you can get away from the city lights. The scope comes with a finder scope on the side uh, to help aim it, a uh, diagonal and two eyepieces, a 25 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. Now your 25 millimeter is the low power, and the 10 millimeter is the high power. It's kind of the opposite of the way that you'd expect. Higher the number, lower the power. So while I'm here, I'll just tell you, you always want to start uh, viewing with the 25 millimeter because it gives you that wide field of view. Once you've found something, let's say you're looking at Jupiter, you find it with this one, and then you want to zoom in, you pop that one out, put the higher power one in, and then just refocus here, and you get a closer up image. The finder scope is a reflex sight. There's no magnification. It has a little red dot that floats in the middle of the field of view and allows you to quickly overlap it with the object and then you'll find it in the, in the main scope. Now I get this question a lot from beginners when they start viewing. They never align this thing. So they try to use it to find Jupiter and then they look through the eyepiece and it's not there. Well, you've got to calibrate it when you first set it up. Just slip, simply slipping it into the, the mounting shoe here isn't good enough. It's not pointed exactly at the same thing. So we give you two screws, uh, this direction, up and down, sort of, and this direction here, this left and right direction, to calibrate the dot to the main view. So how do you do that? Um, I'm going to pretend to look at something out here. I don't have that much, that good of a view. But you've got to find something the hard way first. Find it with your main scope. And actually, I'm going to use the 25, because that's probably easiest. Use the 25, lock it down. Point it off at a building or a uh, power pole or something um, fairly far away, usually about a, a quarter mile or more away is good enough. And find it not using the finder scope, because remember, that's not aligned yet. So I'm going to find it here with my eyepiece, get it centered, make sure it's an identified object. If you're looking at one tree among a bunch of trees in a forest, you're never going to know which one you're actually looking at. So make sure it's easily identifiable. So I get the top of the power pole over there. And I got the corner of it right in the center of the field of view. Now look through your finder scope after you turn it on, and you'll see a little dot, and you'll notice it's not looking at the same thing. Adjust this screw and this screw back and forth until the dot is overlapping with what you see here. You might have to go back and forth once or twice in case you bump this on the way back and forth. Uh, just verify it's centered, and then verify it's centered here, and then you've used this to align um, the object, and when you point it at Jupiter and get it on the dot, you know you'll see Jupiter in the field of view of your low-power eyepiece. It's as simple as that. So the telescope itself sits on top of this equatorial mount, and this is a little bit different than your normal photo tripod, which just swivels left and right, up and down. The equatorial mount is designed to track uh, the axis of Earth's rotation, so it'll follow things in the sky very easily by just twisting one knob. 
there's a little setup involved in um, getting it uh, up and running, and it's a little bit more of a learning curve to kind of figure out the coordinates. If you loosen the two axes, you've got this direction, this east to west arc, and then north and south along this axis. And basically, the Earth's axis of rotation is going to be parallel to this. So right now, if you can see that I've got it set to about 37 degrees, that's our latitude here in, um, in the San Francisco Bay Area. If you're much further north, you're going to want to loosen the latitude lock screw and then adjust it up here. And if you notice, this is slowly moving upwards. It's probably at 40 degrees now or 45 degrees. Basically, that just corresponds to how high Polaris is above the north horizon. So I'm going to bring it back down to our 37 degrees, somewhere around there. Then you just have to locate which direction is north. Uh, if you can find Polaris, that's perfect. Point this axis northwards and at the right latitude, and you're right at uh, Polaris, so you're polar aligned. Otherwise, uh, use a compass, use your smartphone, look at a map, uh, figure out which street near you runs exactly north-south, and just line it parallel. As long as this is pointed towards Polaris, the mount is polar aligned. And what that means is, let's say I'm looking at, uh, let's just say I'm looking at Jupiter right there. I lock the knobs down, and then the slow motion knobs, if I'm aligned, I just have to twist this one on the side here, the right ascension knob, and it'll follow Jupiter as it rotates through the night sky, or any object. It's, it's parallel to Earth's axis of rotation and follows as the Earth rotates underneath us. All right, well, there you have it. So I hope you see that it actually isn't too difficult to use the Orion Observer ADST. Uh, you're ready to start viewing things in the night sky, so go have some fun. Thank you very much. Clear skies. What makes Nexstar SE a favorite among serious observers and newcomers alike? It all starts with our signature orange tube, Schmidt Cassegrain, and Maxutov Cassegrain optics. Available in 4, 5, 6, and 8 inch apertures. We've added our proprietary Starbright XLT optical coating to enhance light transmission, making your images brighter and more detailed. We know the best telescope is the one you will use most often. That's why Nexstar SE breaks down into several lightweight pieces. It's the perfect choice for camping and sets up quickly in your backyard. If you're new to astronomy, you can begin enjoying the night sky right away with Nexstar SE. The computerized hand control guides you through our simple sky align procedure, then automatically generates a sky tour of all the best objects to view. Choose from thousands of objects in Nexstar SE's database. Then, the computerized fork arm mount accurately points your telescope, centers your object perfectly in the eyepiece, and tracks it as it moves across the sky. You can even get started in astroimaging with your Nexstar SE. Just attach any Celestron planetary camera or your DSLR. The 4 and 5 inch models also include a wedge for long exposure photography. Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Orion and this is the GoScope 80mm uh, tabletop telescope. It's an 80 millimeter refractor on a very simple uh, swivel Altaz mount. So it swivels up and down, left and right, and you get very smooth motion, so it's easy to track things. It comes with two eyepieces, a 20 and a 10 millimeter, as well as an Orion Easy Finder reflex sight. Now, 80 millimeters is good enough aperture to see the brighter deep sky objects, so uh, objects such as the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, many of the, uh, of the Messier objects, as well as great views of the moon and planets. Uh, another nice thing about the tripod itself is you're not stuck having to use a table. It's got a tripod socket on the bottom, so any camera tripod you might have at home for your photographic equipment uh, will work, and you can raise this up a little in case you didn't have a tripod. Let your telescope take you on a tour of the cosmos with the Nexstar SLT or Star Locating Telescope. 
Every telescope in this popular family features the same locating technology on our high-end observatory telescope, priced to fit your budget. Designed with beginning and intermediate amateur astronomer in mind, Nexstar SLT is easy to set up and use. Assembling the telescope takes just a few minutes. Then, the computerized Nexstar Plus hand control guides you through our sky align procedure. Center any three bright objects and the telescope is aligned and ready to locate any star, planet, or galaxy in its 40,000 object database. If you aren't sure what to observe, check out the Sky Tour. It automatically generates a list of the best objects currently visible based on your exact time and location. This SLT family features a variety of optical tube sizes and styles. There's a 102 mm refractor, 90 mm, and 127 mm Maxutov Cassegrain models, and the 130 mm Newtonian reflector with maximum light gathering ability. All four models provide the bright, sharp images you'd expect from Celestron, the world's number one telescope maker. Your Nexstar SLT includes everything you need to get started with amateur astronomy, including a tripod, a finder scope, and two eyepieces. When you're out under the stars, use Celestron's free Sky Portal mobile app for iOS and Android to locate objects in the night sky. As you observe, listen to Sky Portal's audio descriptions for the most popular objects. Happy stargazing! Embark on a voyage of discovery with your family with Celestron's best-selling Power Seeker Equatorial Mount Telescopes. These telescopes come with everything you need to get started with astronomy, including a tripod, a finder scope, two eyepieces, and a Barlow lens, which triples the power of each eyepiece. The Equatorial Mount is a favorite of amateur astronomers because it makes it easier to track objects as they appear to move across the night sky. Choose the optical tube that's right for you, from the compact Power Seeker 60 EQ with grab-and-go convenience to the large Power Seeker 127 EQ with more light-gathering ability. Every Power Seeker offers great views of the moon and planets. A larger model will provide more detailed views and help you enjoy fainter deep-sky objects like star clusters and nebulae. When you're out under the stars, use Celestron's free Sky Portal mobile app for iOS and Android to locate objects in the night sky. Center the object in the finder scope and it's ready to view. As you observe, listen to Sky Portal's audio descriptions for the most popular objects. Happy stargazing! Mm -hmm.